Proverbs chapter 1, we're continuing our journey through the books of the Bible. And uh, remember, we started in Genesis. We went Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, and now Proverbs. Oh, boy. Uh, praise the Lord. We've, made, we've come a long ways. And the book of Proverbs, and this is an interesting book in the Bible. And uh, the word proverb or proverbs is in, found in the Bible some uh, over 20 different times. And, and really, uh, you find it in the book of Numbers, Deuteronomy, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, uh, 1 Kings, 2 Chronicles. You find it in the book of Psalms. You find it in the New Testament, the book of John. And the word proverb. Uh, what is a proverb? Uh, what does it mean? And what is this book of Proverbs? And what does it have to do with you? And what does it have to do with me? Uh, this is an exciting book. And I look back over the years of my, my Christian walk. This book, I've probably spent more time in the book of Proverbs than any, book, any, any of the other books. And uh, this book of wisdom right here, it's for you and it's for me. And I believe tonight's lesson uh, will be a blessing and help. Let's do this. If you can, stand in honor of God's Word. We're going to read the first six verses. And what we'll do is we'll read the first six verses all together in unison. Ready? The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. And it continues. What a wonderful. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, the book of Proverbs, Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. Dear Father in heaven, love you. It's been a good day. And Lord, I thank you for people who love you enough to come on a Wednesday night service, Lord. And uh, singing's been good. Praise God that we're able to pray together. But also know it's a, an important time when we go to your word. And I pray that you help us to open our hearts and our minds to the book of Proverbs. Help us to see some truth in the book of Proverbs that will help us as we read it later on. And Lord, I pray you fill me full of your Holy Spirit and your power. Help me to decrease and you to increase, Lord. We need you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs. That word proverb, as I said, is found uh, throughout the Bible, from the book of Numbers and then into the New Testament to the second, uh, second Peter chapter 2. And sometimes you read proverb, you begin, what is a proverb? In the book of John, uh, chapter 16, it's mentioned twice. It says, these things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. And that's interesting. When I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. A few verses later in John chapter 16, verse 29, his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. And that's an interesting. What is a proverb? Why does it seem that in the book of Proverbs there are easy sayings? And why does it mention that it seems like it's not something easy in the book of John. And as I was studying for this sermon, I was trying to figure some things out myself. That's what I'm getting at right now. That portion of the book of John has confused me in the past. And as I was studying for this uh, sermon, all of a sudden I realized some things. And I'll go back to that book of John chapter 16 in just uh, a moment. But what is a proverb? Say that with me. What is a proverb? And a proverb is distilled wisdom. They are short, often pithy sayings that in a few words give the result of years of human experience. I'll read that phrase again. But a proverb is just distilled wisdom. It's often a short, pithy saying that uh, in just a few short words gives the, the result of years of human experience. For example, look before you leap. And that's a, a proverb, not necessarily found in the Bible, but it's a proverb that we would say. Uh, a penny saved is a penny heard. That would be a proverb.
proverb, and we recognize these sayings almost immediately. The English language is filled with many proverbs, and um, we know, uh, or spare the rod, spoil the child. And the book of Proverbs is, uh, is the how-to manual for Christian living, and it's filled with proverbs, short, pithy sayings of distilled wisdom, and it is a how-to manual for living the Christian life. And, and understand that. Short, pithy statements uh, that is a how-to manual uh, for us to live the Christian life. And the, the book of Proverbs is quite different from any other book in the, in the Bible. It is not history or poetry or prophecy or law or ritual or, or story or even dogma. It belongs to the wisdom literature of the Hebrew people, but it differs from some of the other wisdom uh, books like Job or Ecclesiastes. And the book of Proverbs, it deals with countless topics of wisdom, uh, sin, goodness, wealth, temptation, pride, humility, justice, folly, friendship, idleness, poverty, family life, pleasure, revenge, strife, gluttony, drunkenness, and success. The book of Proverbs is amazing. Now, uh, who wrote the book of Proverbs? And that, that's a, an interesting thought when we get there. Who wrote the book of Proverbs? The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Say that with me. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. That's Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. Now, we, we begin to go just slightly further. The Proverbs of Solomon. So some of these Proverbs are obviously the Proverbs of Solomon. Um, in 1 Kings... Chapter 4, speaking of Solomon, I want to read uh, verses 29 through 32. Listen to this, speaking of Solomon. Solomon, the great king. Solomon, the wise king. It says in uh, 1 Kings chapter 4, it says, uh, verse 29, God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largest, largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of the of Egypt for he was wiser than all men than Ethan the Ezrahite and Heman and uh, Chalcol and Darda and the sons of Mahal and his fame was in all nations round about and now I, I just want to draw a map I just I just am dying to draw a map and so looking at the time right here I've looked for every excuse in the book to draw uh, one of my maps right there. But uh, in that verse right there, uh, you begin to look at this. I'm going to go a little bit further. There's my, uh, oh, oh, okay, uh, okay, uh, get over there. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay. That's so beautiful. I know this makes perfect sense to, uh, yes, uh, praise the Lord. Okay, there we go. We have uh, these things right here. We have Sicily right there. Now, uh, this is making wonderful sense. I'm going over here to draw with my orange. Now, this is Jerusalem. He was king of Israel in, I can use one of these right there, Jerusalem. And uh, this we know is north, uh, north south, east, okay, and then we have west. And so we read that verse, okay, this is 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 31, for he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezrahite, and Heman, and Chalcol, and Darda, and the sons of Mahal, and his fame was in all nations round about. At all nations, you understand that? All nations. So he was so wise there were people that heard from him down in Ethiopia. Uh, they, they heard from him over in the east over here, and we'd have the uh, Persian Gulf right there, those rivers, and he would have been heard of over here in, around Babylon and Nineveh, and he would have been, Nineveh and Babylon, and he would have been heard probably over in India, and boys, people up here in the region of Syria would have heard of him. And, and pro the Proverbs of Psalm, they, he was known all over for his what? His wisdom. Okay. The next verse says this. It says in verse 32, And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. So the, it says right there, he spake 3,000 proverbs, okay? We're going to another step right here. How many proverbs did he speak? Okay, 3,000. Okay, the book of Proverbs has 31 chapters, okay? 
there are 915 verses in the book of Proverbs. So not all 3,000 of the Proverbs that the short, pithy, uh, distilled wisdom that Solomon spoke were the Bible. And so that verse doesn't mean that the Proverbs of Solomon was all those 3,000. In Proverbs, there's only 915 verses, okay? And then here's something else. Not all the Proverbs that are found in the book of Proverbs are actually Proverbs of Solomon. I'm going to say it again. Not all the Proverbs found in the book of Proverbs are the Proverbs of Solomon. And so we're going to go through this really quick. We have the Proverbs of Solomon. Then if you were to go to chapter 22, go to with me to chapter 22, Proverbs 22. We have in the book of Proverbs, the Proverbs of Solomon. All of his Proverbs? No. Just certainly the Proverbs that were given to him from the Lord. Amen. And uh, now then verse 22 or chapter 22, verse 17, it says, bow down thine ear and hear the words of the. OK, so who wrote the book of Proverbs? You had Solomon and then you also had the wise. And uh, that's interesting. There was the wise. Then uh, verse, chapter 25, go to chapter 25, if you will. So we had Solomon, then the wise. It doesn't uh, give specifics there. And chapter 25, verse 1, these are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. So the Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah somehow gathered them together and copied them out. And so then we have this. Look at chapter 30. Look at chapter 30. It says, the words of Agur, the son of Jackie, even the prophecy, the men spake unto Ithiel, even at Ithiel and Eucal. And so here we have Agur wrote some of these Proverbs, chapter 30. And so we have Agur. Look at uh, chapter 31. And it says the, in, in chapter 31, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. So you have King Lemuel and his mother. And so here you have Solomon, the wise you have the, the Proverbs of Solomon, the men of Hezekiah copied out, Agur, and then King Lemuel and his mother. And so uh, we look at that. Solomon, many of these are Solomon. Most of them are the Proverbs of Solomon, but there were other writers of the book of Solomon. Now, the book of Solomon, or, or the, um, the I, I have my map right here. If I'm going to draw over my map. Oh. All right, I don't know if this was such a good idea. In my study, it looked really grand. And so, okay. Oh, now, you see, that's my flashlight. Okay? And so, uh, 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 uh. okay, that's a beam. Okay? And just to make it more beamy, uh, right there. Now, okay, Pastor, why are you doing that? Because the book of Proverbs is almost 915 short beams of light. Uh, and, and you look at them, it's almost a proverb. It's distilled wisdom. It's a short, pithy statement, often just a verse long. There's some more than a verse long, but in reality, they're just short, pithy saying after pithy saying after pithy saying of distilled wisdom over and over and over and over and over and over and over again in the book of Proverbs. It's not a story. It's not a, uh, a, uh, a book of history or law or a parable right there. They're, they're little proverbs of pithy sayings. It's like beam lights of, of uh, a help that you can read. And so when we read a proverb, one little pithy statement, uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. That's a proverb. It's a beam like a a little saying that can help you. All of a sudden, you're going through a difficult time, a struggle, and all of a sudden, what should I do? Well, I had to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. What else should I do? In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he promises to direct your path. And so remember of that right there. Okay, we move on from that. Uh, the basic outline for the book of Proverbs. I wanted to uh, outline it, then I want to go over the outline. And so I'm going to... It got me. Okay, let me see here. Basic outline. Okay. Patience, patience, patience. I know everybody here is patient because I am your pastor. You have to be patient. And so praise the Lord. All right. 
Some of you are new here and haven't learned that patience yet. <laughs> it won't take long. Okay. Oh, wrong color here. <laughs> the outline. And uh, hmm, let me see this. I know you, it's hard for you to see this right here. But there, there is the outline is the why of Proverbs. The, the why. Oh, boy. Proverbs. It's worth me writing this out. The why of Proverbs. Some capital, some not. This is going to be Proverbs uh, 1. Verse, uh, it's going to be verses 1 through 5. 1 through 5. Okay? Then, so the why of Proverbs. Why is God giving us this book? Okay? Don't lose me. I'm, I'm taking a little bit more time on this than usual right here and writing it out. But, but the first five verses are going to tell us why God has given us this book. Okay? It's important. If you understand why God has given you this book, it'll help you as you read this book. Amen. If you don't understand why God has given it to you, then as you read it, it's not going to make as much sense. And then it's going to tell us the how of Proverbs. Okay? The how. The, oh boy, look at that. The how. Just forgive my up and down of my capitals and the, the how of Proverbs. Okay, so after it gives us the why, it's going to secondly give us, that's chapter 1, and it's going to be verses 6 uh, through uh, six and 7, okay? Then after that, it's just going to be a huge section of the Proverbs. I'm, I put that section as the Proverbs. And so after it tells you uh, the why and the how, then it's going to be a huge section. It's going to go from verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, all the way through the uh, through chapter to end of chapter 28. Okay, then the last section is the the end or it's the, the conclusion. All right, here, watch this. Conclusion, conclusion is going to be chapters 30 and 31, and those uh, are going to simply show us at the end the ideal life, ideal life that we can live, and then it's going to show us the ideal life. And that's Proverbs 31. And so, now, as I go through this, you're going to see that. We're going to look at the why of Proverbs, the how of Proverbs. Then we're going to go through some Proverbs, and then we'll look at the very end of the conclusion. Now, I want you to look there at chapter 1. We're going to look at the why, okay? Say, oh, I know, it's, it's rough there, Brother Sonny. Uh, pastor had good intentions. The why. Look at chapter 1, verse 1. I'm going to read this. The Proverbs of, of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. So stop right there. God gives us Proverbs so that we will know, have knowledge of wisdom and instruction. He gives us Proverbs so that we can have wisdom and instruction. He gives us, why Proverbs? So he's given it to us so that we can obtain, we can have, we can, it's like him handing us wisdom that we can grab onto it and hold on to wisdom. That's important right there. You say, well, pastor, I'm a pretty simple man or I'm a pretty simple woman. By the way, the book of Proverbs talks much about the simple man or the simple woman. And it warns us from of the, the, some of the thoughts of the simple wisdom. It talks about how the simple, uh, it's a dangerous place to be. And he's, hey, offering the simple wisdom. And he's offering them instruction right there. So he wants you to know wisdom and instruction. It continues on. The why. Uh, it says uh, to perceive the words of understanding. Uh, to have, uh, in other words, to comprehend. He wants you to not only live your life, but he under, wants you to understand some basic uh, mannerisms in life. Remember, we go back through this. Oh, Pastor Netasan. The book of Proverbs is a, is a how-to manual for Christian living. He wants you to understand how to walk every day in your life. He wants you to, how to understand how to deal with people. He wants you to understand how to raise your children. He wants you to understand wife, how to be a good uh, a wife. A uh, husband, he wants to understand how to be a good husband. He wants you to how to deal with your employer. He wants you to uh, show you that how you can till your ground out in the field and make sure you're, you're taken care of in the winter time with food. And so it gives you understanding. Hey, God wants you to know. He wants you to have wisdom. And he wants to give you some understanding, have some uh, perception. Now, 
Uh, don't get bored with this. It's so important. Uh, you go on a little bit further, um, and it says to receive the instruction, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. So the book of Proverbs is so you can receive some things. Here, it's for you. You can have it. Okay, here, here's, you, you may not understand, and most of you have been in church maybe at least a couple weeks or so. That's good. That's good. Okay. At one time, I really struggled. I struggled immensely. My brother was a genius. The only, the only time he, ne- he did not get an A was in gym class. My brother was genius. And I would go into a class a couple of years after he would, and you said, oh, you're John's brother, aren't you? You must be a genius also. And immediately, I had a complex that I was very ignorant. I had a complex that I was stupid, that there's no way that I could ever learn. And I, in my life, I set myself to a low standard. I have no hope for me. I cannot learn. I am going to be dumb. I'm going to be ignorant. Some of you are still thinking, Pastor, there's no hope for you. (laughs) Okay, that's not very nice, okay? You guys need to read the Proverbs. It'll teach you how to be kind to your pastor, okay? Uh, Praise the Lord. But all of a sudden, when I got gloriously saved and began to read the Scriptures, especially the book of Proverbs, I realized that there was hope for me. It was like a turning on a light switch for me that, boy, I have an opportunity that I can receive wisdom. I can receive those, uh, those things. Uh, I can receive instruction, wisdom, justice, judgment, equity. And it says to give subtlety to the simple. That word subtlety is interesting because we hear, but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Subtlety is not always a bad thing. Subtlety can be bad. Satan uses it in a bad way. But the word subtlety is not always bad. Uh, Subtlety means uh, a fineness or refinement. It's saying, hey, you, if you're simple, if you're ignorant, if you're unlearned, God can refine you. He can grow you. He can lead you into wisdom. He can lead you. The book of Proverbs was given to you, the simple one, so you don't have to be simple anymore. It gives to you who are struggling how to be a good mom. You don't have to struggle. He'll help you with that. Hey, you people that struggle with your work ethic, he's going to show you how you don't have to struggle with your work ethic anymore. You people that struggle with your your mind looking at the wrong things, he's going to show you how you don't have to live that way. It's refinement. It's uh, it's, uh, the way it's the word subtlety to the simple. To the young man, wow, the book of Proverbs ought to be studied, read by every young man and every young woman. To the children of our church, it is an amazing book. Uh, to give the uh, subtlety of some young man knowledge and dis- uh, discretion, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. We're going to move on, but the why. Study the why. It's given so you don't have to be ignorant. It's given so you don't have to be simple. It's given so you don't have to be uh, somebody who does not understand. It's given so you can have wisdom, so you can understand. It's a wonderful book. But then we get to the, now we know what, why, but how? How can we get that wisdom? How can we get that understanding? How can we get that justice, that equity, all of that? Well, it tells us exactly how in the next part, chapter 1, verse 6. This is amazing. This is simply amazing. Look at verse 6. To understand a proverb. Stop right there. That's the key. He's saying, hey, you want to understand? You want to figure this thing out? You want to know the why? I'm about to tell you. And he tells you right here. To understand a proverb and the interpretation The words of the wise and their dark sayings. Here is the key in verse number 7. It ought to be underlined. It ought to be maybe memorized in your heart. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's the key right there. The fear of the Lord. By the way, many of you will stop right here. May not outwardly say it, but inwardly saying, I don't understand what in the world does the fear of the Lord mean. I'm confused. Pastor, I've, never, I've heard that term, but uh, it doesn't make sense that I ought to fear the Lord. So what you have to do is start trying to understand what does it mean to have the fear of the Lord? Because if that's the key of the how of Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is very important. 
Because if you're to make sense of the why and begin to understand all of the Proverbs right there, you have to have that key of the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? Let's talk about that for a moment. The fear of the Lord is a reverence. It's a respect and awe of God. Okay, the fear of the Lord, it's a reverence of God. It's a respect and it's an awe of, of the Lord. This is how uh, we are to understand uh, a proverb. Many do not have a respect, a reverence, a fear of the Almighty God. In other words, many people lift themselves up. They say, yeah, I know what the Bible says right there in the book of Proverbs. To train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's older, he'll not depart. He that spareth, well, I'm not quoting that right, but uh, he that chasteneth his son be times. He says, I know, but that's, you know, that's thousands of years ago. It's 2017. And if I do that, you know, I'm just, you know, it's child abuse, pastor. Now, now let's stop right here for a second. All of a sudden, they're elevating something above God. They're putting something above the word of God. There's no awe of God. There's no respect of God. There's no reverence of God. What they've done is exalt maybe the opinion of somebody else. They've maybe exalted the opinion of man or their own wisdom. And they've elevated that above God. And they said, God, you're down there. I'm up here. And simply the fear of the Lord is to take ourselves way down here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Lord, I, uh, I must decrease. You must increase. Lord, I know nothing, but I want, let this mind be in you, in me, Lord. I want that mind. I want your mind. I want to understand what you think, Lord. Let me to decrease, you to increase. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what my neighbor says. It doesn't matter what the newspaper says. Amen. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It matters what you say, God. Hallelujah. And it goes in every aspect. Our, our, I'll tell you one of the great sins we have in, in American churches it's a great sin. We elevate and think way too highly of ourselves. We've got it all figured out. I could mention some very offensive things tonight, found biblically. It's right there written. And I've even written them in my notes. I have. And I have. But the only reason they're offensive to us is because we have lifted and elevated the education of the world so high in our minds. And the only way for us to get into the book of Proverbs and under, is to lower self, lower self so low and exalt God so high, have a fear, have a reverence, have a respect, an awe of God. Amen. Boy, it's an amazing truth right there. But why? Hey, God's given us an opportunity of a lifetime, but the only way we'll ever receive it is if we begin to lower ourselves. So right there, before you read the book of, of Proverbs, say, you know, I don't care if I understand everything about Proverbs, I'm going to believe it. Amen. I don't care if I've been taught something different, it doesn't matter, I'm going to believe it. Okay. We go further. The, oh, how to do this tonight? We might just do a, th th that might be a good place to stop and I'll go into it next week. Because there's so much here, it's so wonderful. If you just get this point, to understand the proverb, what you, we need to do is to, if, we, if you desire not to be simple, you desire to be wise, you desire to have understanding, you desire to, to make sense of the book of Proverbs, you've got to completely lower yourself. When you read it in your mind, picture yourself getting on your knees, actually flat on your face, as low as you can go, and exalt God as how much as you can, as much as you can. Amen. And all of a sudden, it'll change your reading of Proverbs. It'll change your reading of Proverbs. I'll wait till next week to offend you all. <laughs> because the book of Bible or the book of Proverbs to somebody who does not have a respect of God or a fear of the Lord, the book of Proverbs can be quite offensive. And listen, if all of a sudden we go all fall flat on our face, we lower ourselves, a great peace have they which love thy law. law. In order to love thy law, you have to love God and have a fear of him. And nothing shall offend him. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, it's a good place to stop. Not a long message, but it's a good place to stop, Lord. If somehow in our hearts and our minds we could lower self and we could exalt you, Lord. If we could submit ourselves to you, 
boy, our world would be forever changed. Our understanding of the Bible would be forever changed. We would go from simple people to wise people. We would have a, a proper judgment. We'd have proper reverence. We'd have uh, just proper dealings with people. It would make us better employees. It would make us better husbands, better wives, better children. It would teach us better how to raise our children, Lord. And it's such a wonderful truth, Lord. I pray that you help us to understand that the Proverbs was given to us as a practical guide to live the Christian life, Lord. God, I pray that you somehow help us to lower ourselves.